Continuing in the grand tradition of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World, an RKO Pictures 1933 classic adventure film, King Kong. Our whale of a tale follows an ill-fated scientific expedition deep into the Amazon, where they meet and attempt to capture one of the most innovative and influential movie monsters in cinema history. With visuals that would inspire Steven Spielberg in his underwater thriller Jaws, as well as fan favorite characters like BPRD Agent Abe Sapien. The last of the classic Universal monsters, the creature from the Black Lagoon, was the very first full body creature suit that had any real credibility on screen, and paved the way for more elaborate movie monsters like Alien and Predator. Since this is the month of October, join me as we dive into my favorite universal monster, the creature from the Black Lagoon. But first, I want to thank you all for your kind words and well wishes concerning my health last weekend. I have been resting and I am feeling much better. Thank you as well for your patience. I firmly expected since I was a day late, I would be a dollar short, as the saying goes. But I want to give a heartfelt thank you to Elizabeth Mulligan, brand new Hero of the Empire, Israel Santos, and Snow Trooper Captain Noah Dingley for your donations last weekend. We are a third of the way towards our goal for replacing my damaged suit. We average about 100 views a week, so if everyone just gave $5, we could reach our goal in no time. If you've enjoyed our content, please consider donating today. Not only will you help replace my damaged suit, your name will be listed on the end credits of our upcoming fan film, Star Wars Fallen Jedi. Years before Jaws was the big fish in the horror pond that made audiences afraid to go into the water, Creature from the Black Lagoon made a splash of its own, grossing $2 million in just two months. Directed by Jack Arnold, a former documentary cameraman during World War II, a far cry from his later work directing The Brady Bunch, Arnold's intent, in his own words, was to play upon the basic fear that people have about what might be lurking below the surface of any body of water. On March 5, 1954, he did just that, thrilling audiences the world over with a creature so terrifyingly real. Trailers for the film could not be shown on television until after dark, when children were supposed to be in bed. The first film shot underwater in 3D. The final addition to the roster of classic Universal monsters was packed to the gills with suspense, a fantastic cast, and groundbreaking creature suit work that not only holds up to this day, but changed the face of monster and science fiction films forever. Our film starts off with a bang, and after some narration by a voice actor named Art Gilmore, fittingly enough, this particular fish story hooks you right away, as a team of scientists set out on an expedition deep into the Amazon jungle after finding the fossilized remains of a mysterious creature. While other Universal Monster films like The Mummy, Dracula, and The Wolfman are rooted in the occult or other forms of mysticism, Creature from the Black Lagoon is more akin to the science fiction classics like The Thing from Another World, 20 Million Miles from Earth, or Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Back to the movie. Turns out our fine Finny Fein doesn't take too kindly to having his distant relatives dug up, so he attacks the camp one night, and you can certainly see the influence this film had on how Steven Spielberg filmed some of the dinosaur attacks in Jurassic Park. <laughs> The roar of the T-Rex and the Gill Man even share certain similarities. <laughs> Fun fact. George Lucas originally intended Han Solo to be a green-skinned alien with gills, describing him in his early notes as a mixture of the Gill Man and Humphrey Bogart. We get our first look at the creature, and Julie Adams, who played Kay Lawrence for that matter, in the now iconic swimming scene. And like the slogan says, every kiss begins with K, it seems. Because one look at her and good old fish lips is hooked. Even boarding their boat in search of his newfound love. Uh oh, 
What's this? What footprints? Either it's a king-sized duck or we're not the only ones on this ship. One of the many things I absolutely love about this film is that it feels very much like an extended episode of the classic Hanna-Barbera animated adventure series, Johnny Quest. If you're a fan of classic animation, monsters, adventure, and classic sci-fi, I highly recommend this series. After spotting the footprints, our heroes decide to go fishing and strip the creature a Mickey fin, which leaves him a little green under the gill. And for a while, things go swimmingly, that is, of course, until the powerful Gillman tips the scales in his favor and escapes. Our intrepid scientists decide to bravely run away and return with a well-armed expedition later. But their plans quickly go down the drain when the love-struck cuttlefish blocks them into the lagoon with a fallen tree. While our crew of eggheads try to clear their path with a wench, Gilbert Godfrey over here boards their ship and captures a wench of his own, leading to the final confrontation, where man and beast fight to the finish. Jack Kevan, who worked on The Wizard of Oz in 1939, and Chris Mueller, under the supervision of Bud Westmore, the uncle of Star Trek makeup artist Michael Westmore, were responsible for bringing Millicent Patrick's iconic creature design to life for the big screen. Born an Italian baroness, Millicent Patrick was a model, conceptual artist, interior decorator, and the first female animator for Walt Disney Studios throughout her colorful career, although the Gill Man was her favorite creation. The product of eight and a half months of intensive research and development, it took three hours for stuntman Rico Browning and Ben Chapman to get into costume each day. Browning, a professional diver, had to hold his breath for up to four minutes at a time because they did not leave room for an air tank in his costume. While Ben Chapman, a veteran of the Korean War, portrayed the creature on land. The restrictive costume made it impossible for Chapman to sit down during his entire 14-hour days of shooting. And while Rico Browning is best remembered for lending his underwater talents to the creature, he is more proud of the other work he has done throughout his career including writing and directorial work, as well as creating the popular television series, Flipper. The Creature from the Black Lagoon has nearly been remade several times, with John Carpenter, Peter Jackson, and Guillermo del Toro all being offered a chance to direct. In 1982, John Landis approached Jack Arnold to remake his iconic film, with special effects legend Rick Baker on board to create the updated Gill Man. But sadly, Universal Studios opted instead to make Jaws 3D, proving the biggest fish story is always about the one that got away. So for a sense of adventure, memorable composite film score by Henry Mancini, Hans J. Salter, and Herman Stein, 50 sci-fi charm, and industry-defining creature effects, I give this film 5 out of 5 Death Stars. Creature from the Black Lagoon is Impressive. Most impressive. This has been Vader Reviews. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. And follow me on Twitter, at Vader Reviews. Join the Empire today. You do not yet realize your importance. Share these videos, and together, we will rule the internet. And always remember, you don't know the power of the dark side.